Mm, uh, hello, YouTube. Welcome back. This is Baylor Mage again, and today we're talking about the most important thing when it comes to planning your league start. Your Atlas tree. Uh, we spent the majority of today coming up with, I'm going to call it six different Atlas trees that we could run depending on what we wanted. There's technically seven here, but I am not calling the seventh one a league start atlas tree that is the grand design tree right here is a, a whole different thing but we're going to go through these one by one i think it's important that there are more than one strat because there are more than one kind of person and more than one kind of content i believe when it comes to picking your league start this should be the thing you pick first um i'll state right off the bat these are just the six that i came up with and the best versions of them that i could do um, we did have a lot of help from chat as well optimizing the trees to be a little bit better and each tree has a few things in it that are just you know optional things or personal preference things so i'm sure there'll be other trees i'm sure there'll be other content creators putting out their trees as well this is just the best six i've come up with for a league start scenario so we've got some no investment Alc and go maps expedition farming breach and legion farming light farming boss map map boss rushing and early delirium farming so i will have links to all of these in the description uh and we're gonna just go through them real quickly to just explain what things are optional and what the point of it is so the first one we're starting with is just no investment Alc and go for me this is the best one that I could look at that was no investment Alc and go so the idea of this tree is just that there is no prep no setup time no anything um you just are putting maps in and running maps and that's literally it there's no sextant usage there's no scarabs there's no anything going on now this is probably the least profitable tree of all of the ones that I've come up with However, it is not not profitable. You could run this and still, if you were playing 10 or 12 hours a day, still make a headhunter in under five days. This would be still tons of money. We've gone for all the obvious stuff. This is the most generic tree. Um, we've got our strong boxes, essences, some shrines, some harbingers, um, uh, some altars here, uh, some more altars there. Option of taking this if your build can handle it option of taking this which you should do if your build can handle it you definitely want this rare extra monster so long as you can or this extra modifier rather as long as your build can take it you'll notice this is a theme in all of them uh this is always a build a node that you can just take or leave depending on whether or not you can handle it if you can handle it you should take it anyway this would be the final path that you would do would be just getting the top hat here and then coming over and getting this little eldritch currency one this is also the tree that i'm the least happy with of all of my trees um i will mention as well down here what i've chosen to block these are just examples uh whatever you choose to block you should try and block at least two or three things preferably three um i think the 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 minimum that i want to block is three just because of how the math works out um but four and five is also really good you don't really want to block six although you can it's not that big of a down point but you should only block the things that you don't want you should base that based on what your build is and what maps you plan on running so if you're going to be running cells and dungeons all day every day you're probably not going to want to do breaches they're very very poor in maps like that we're probably going to want to block them if your build just does absolutely horrible at legions you're going to want to block legion if you do great at legion and you're doing open maps you're going to want to leave legion on you're going to want to block something else um, all of my trees are probably going to block sacred grove purely for the reason that i don't like harvest and whenever i see a harvest it makes that map less fun for me it's super profitable and you should do harvest but i don't like it and i'm going to prioritize fun over profit but that's just me um but anyway this is the tree i'm the least happy with and i'm going to be honest i can't figure out whether it's because the tree is unoptimized for an elk and go strategy and i just haven't had the brain to work out a better one or if it's actually fine 
and it's just that i never do an alcan go strategy and that that strategy isn't me and i don't like it because i don't want to do an alcan go strategy i want to be building in scarabs i want to be putting in sextants i want to be juicing my stuff and that might be the reason why i don't like it but it's the most optimal i can get obviously we have the stream of consciousness and uh that's really that and the altars and the uh rare monsters here is the only new notables we get um again singular this singular focus node here um might be really good when your atlas is finished but please do not take this early um it, this is this is a finished atlas only and in certain atlas strategies node this is not a take on every atlas node please do not get this node until your atlas is like complete or at least as close to complete as it can get right moving on that is your alcan go and also my least interesting one now if you are somebody who's going to be making a build that's like really good at clear speed you you move quick you clear the entire screen at the same time i'm thinking something like um you know tornado shot winter or blade vortex with chain explosions that sort of thing like if you're good at clearing this could be a very very profitable tree super early so the purpose of this tree is that we would be farming breaches and legions together so we're after both of them in every map we're probably talking scarabs um i actually don't remember if they're on the map device right now because i've been awake too long but we're talking all the investment into those two mechanics and then we've blocked whatever is relevant for us to block uh, we take as many map nodes as we need um to to maintain stuff and this actually only has 104 points in it because we don't actually like need anything else and we can take the rest of the we can take the rest of the top hat we can go in for quant nodes um, you can do whatever you want with the remaining points you can take some kirak things take some alva things you could put essences and strong boxes back in if you wanted to but the goal of this is to farm these two things and the reason i've stripped most of the other stuff out of it is because i strongly believe that at least early in the league for the first week or two maybe even three i'm trying to focus on just one or two quick things that you can do and sell those things in bulk is far more profitable than spreading yourself over everything and selling a little bit of a whole bunch of different things um, I just prefer it this way with the with the focus on one thing. Um, so most of these trees will be focused on a single thing, uh, but uh, fortunately, Leech and Breachin, Breach and Legion are so close and so similar in the kind of build that does both of them very well that we've gone with both of them. Uh, we do still get our altars. If your build can handle it, you still take that. If your build can handle it, you still take that. Uh, this will be Breach and Legion farming. Uh, I've personally done this strategy before. It's ever so slightly different now because we can block some stuff and we've got a few extra notables to take, but otherwise, super profitable. Really happy with that one. So, back over. Now we have expedition farming which should be very profitable now you can see i've taken all the expedition nodes in this one there are some things to note in here again i've still got altars by the way this is just going to keep happening altars are too good and they add into everything however you're going to see a few things that keep happening i try to stay away from multiple mechanics that take a lot of time so i've seen a lot of trees that have harvest and expedition in them and I think for most players that that is wrong and you shouldn't do it if we're talking from just a pure finance standpoint, which is what we're doing here because I can't control your fun. That's up to you. But from a pure profit standpoint early in the league, what we're looking to do is sell things in bulk when we can. And so the problem with doing like a mechanic like Harvest and a mechanic like um, Expedition is that they both take a lot of time out of your map and the time you're doing one you're not collecting the other so if you've got 20 logbooks to sell you can sell them for way more than if you had one logbook to sell but if it takes you twice as long to collect that 20 to sell 
in bulk to someone who's willing to pay more, the prices of those logbooks probably came down. And now you're not getting that bulk price you would have got if you got it a day earlier, right? And so that for that sort of reason, I tend to try and stick to one thing. Um, if you're already super knowledgeable, definitely expedition and harvest together can be used to make a ton of money. I know people have used it to make a ton of money, but if you're someone who knows how to use things very, very quickly and very, very efficiently, you don't need this video. So this is more for general population than 1%. Again, we're looking at blocking the things that you want to block, not these are just examples. We block what we want to block here, not whatever I've got all the time. Uh, there's a few notable things that need one notable thing, really, that needs to be remembered about this current tree. In the early stages of this tree, you're going to want to come around there instead of here. And you're going to want to take this node as well. And you're going to want to take these two nodes. These are, this is the way the tree should look to give you the most chance to get expedition in your map. When you are not running scarabs at all, you can even put this one on. However, the goal here should be to be running an expedition scarab. And as soon as that happens, you guarantee the expedition in your map, which means this 1% chance and this 1% chance don't do anything. This 4% chance doesn't do anything, but these are still very worth it. So we're still traveling down here. And then it also means that these two 1% chances also don't do anything. So we swap that over to quantity to keep our notable and drop out of them. So this is the tree that I'll be sharing. It looks like this, but do be aware that if you're going to do legion farming, you should take all the 1% chance nodes until you start buying scarabs. And you should go into that until you start using scarabs because you might as well have more chance of it showing up while you're still filling out the atlas. The other things that I have picked up on this tree is limited to only things that are instant, things that do not slow us down. So we're back to the normal strong box essences. And we put in shrines here because we had some extra points. Shrines are really good. You can take or leave shrines. If you're planning on using a gull helmet, you should definitely take shrines. Otherwise, you can take or leave it. You can add anything else into this that you want. You can still take this node. This is just sort of a skeleton or a guide tree of at least how I would do it. So expedition farming, in my opinion, of the trees I've come up with anyway, third most profitable thing here. Second most profitable thing here for most people, light map farming. Now this is huge, but it's also picky. You will notice the same thing. I have really only put in things that are instant strong box essences in this case because of the way i was path rogue exiles because i imagine that the build that does blighted maps can handle them perfectly fine so the things that i am next to and that are instant and then we've gone with all the blight map nodes because we want to farm blighted maps with this sort of build now this is one of the most profitable things that you can do at least in my opinion um it is huge for profit but only when done correctly Doing it incorrectly would be doing it on any form of open map. Doing it correctly has you in maps like Core and Toxic Sewer and really Core and, <laughs> and anywhere with really, really thin hallways. The reason this thing is profitable is because you are forced to have one lane in the Blights be an oil or map reward. And so what'll happen is you will launch the map. It'll spawn the, the blight. The blight will have, let's say 13 chest rewards in it, but they're all focused on just one lane because you've forced it into a map that has such tight constraints on it. that can only have one or two lanes. Now, granted, sometimes those maps do spawn two or three lanes. Um, usually it's only one or two, just occasionally three but at least one of them is guaranteed to be your map and oil chests, which means you're guaranteed to get a bunch of maps there. That's really cool. Um, that's how it's done correctly. When you split them, you end up with lanes. When you do like open maps, you end up with lanes that have only two or three rewards on them because you have five or six lanes instead of one or two. And so it splits those rewards out over them. And then only one of them is guaranteed to be a map or oil thing. So the rewards seem far less. 
If you do it this way, the rewards are far more. The one thing that I was not sure of was I do not know if taking duplicate map drop chance affects blighted maps. I went with the assumption that it doesn't because I cannot find any information on whether it does or doesn't. If you're running this tree and someone smarter than me says, oh my God, the duplicate map does work. You really should have that. Super easy. We're going to lose our rogue traders off here. They're not very important at all. We're going to lose the Royal Guard here and we're going to lose the entire ruckus wheel because they're really not that important. And we're going to put them all into duplicate notes so that you get more. We're just going to, just going to go around the map, just picking up all the duplicate notes. Uh, that is it. Again, same deal with stream of consciousness. You take it early league when you don't have anything. And as soon as you start putting in scarabs to go with our event, you take it off. Same deal again with blocking content, except that specifically for blight encounters, I, for blight farming, would block everything. Personally, um, everything that isn't blight. You can have two blights in your map, so I would leave blight unlocked so that it has a chance to have a second blight. I don't know if you can have three, so maybe if we stack that high enough, we're using the high scarabs and sextants. Maybe the maybe that chance can't even happen. I don't know if you can have three or not. So maybe you end up blocking that as well. But basically, we're just going to block everything except Blight. I believe the correct strategy, this is only a guess, but I believe the correct strategy for Blight map runners is going to be to launch your map, run directly until you see the Blight, run until you see the second Blight, if you know there's going to be two in there, and then you just leave. I, I don't think you clear the map. I don't think you kill the boss. I think you just leave. It should be a ton of money just an absolute ton of money that should be so black map farming i've done it before it's very good if it sounds like something you would like to do grab that tree use it Whew. next what i think might be the most amount of money but does require a more specific build this will also probably require you to respec your tree a little bit. I don't think you'll be able to get it here. Um, this is also the highest level tree I have. So you can tell it's aimed at a specific kind of person to be an early league tree and have a finished atlas. So the job here is this is basically the same kind of tree we were using for boss rushing strat last league. Now the connected maps thing has been nerfed rather significantly. So it is no longer just kill a boss, get a connected map. But those people who were doing it were over sustaining those maps by about threefold. So I actually don't think this will be a problem. You may even still get away with boss rushing only. But if you don't, you might have to clear like a little bit of the map. But the, the idea of this strategy would be we are looking for like giga clear speed or at least giga run speed style builds. People, we're thinking 250 plus movement speed, preferably more, the more the better. We're thinking things like auto bombers and, you know, super speedy things. And the gameplay loop here is just as quick as we can, we'll pick up essences on the way, but as quick as we can, we rush to a boss, we kill the boss. Then we leave, we launch another map, we do it again. We're looking for conqueror maps, shaper and elder maps, synth maps. And that is the whole thing. We're just going to rush that over and over again. While the interconnected stuff did get nerfed, they were way over sustaining to the point where I don't know if this nerf is really going to matter. I suspect they will still be able to do it anyway. And if they can't, they'll just start cl clearing a little bit of a map. So you'll get like a, a slightly longer map than we were doing it before on like coves where you just launch in run directly to the boss and be done now maybe it ends up having to be a boss like uh, a map like mesa where you can enter clear like two screens around you jump up to the top ledge maybe clear that top little tiny bit that's around the boss and then kill the boss and leave right and maybe it's maybe there's 20 seconds of clearing a map in there in the middle uh at worst case and then they should still be able to maintain you'll be generating a lot of boss content for the bosses by doing this this is one of what i think will be the one of the most profitable strategies to do 
and i think this will also hold up as a profitable strategy this isn't just a league start or a league start week or 10 day strategy this is something you could change to a month into the league and it would still be fantastic um the other thing that this tree does is generate as many alva missions as i could um so i took the generate alva missions nodes and i went through the alva mission here to get another four percent chance and we didn't take any of the other masters because alva missions are king and we use them for juicing all the time um, we love collecting as many alva missions as we can if i could take a node that would double my alvas generated then i would do it fantastic one really good so there's that one now we're going over to my early delirium farming tree so this is another one that i'm not positive on um this is the one that i'm probably going to be running myself so i wish i was a little more confident on it we will be looking at as many trees as i can on the next few days in case i'm wrong but my bullshit mfo idea is supposed to be in delirium maps from as early as possible so if i'm going to be in delirium orbed maps i definitely want all of these rewards for delirium as many of them as i can get i also definitely want these rewards but i do not need this node because i'm putting orbs on the map so i don't need the mirror so we've taken all the delirium stuff uh this stuff will come last as well as this stuff will come last we will do all of those things last the rest of it the rest of all of this is way more important uh and then i have filled it with things that are either instant or things that I think will raise the delirium bar as best as possible. So I've put in some strong boxes because strong boxes are good for the delirium bar. We took those strong box nodes up here. We took harbingers because they're great for the delirium bar. We took flash breach and flash breach only. So I'm not investing in what kind of breach, just that breaches can be good. Uh, we've put those in because they're great for raising the delirium bar. And we have put abyss in because they are great for raising the delirium bar so this strategy is all about doing delirium orbed maps as early as i can um, obviously i will leave off those things that i said and i will also leave off this little ring here uh, so that's pretty much as early as i want to get started doing delirium maps which will be around 100 ish to 105 ish completion uh, that's the strategy i'm going to go with there i actually don't know how profitable this is going to be super early i suspect it's going to be really good but i've never done anything like this this early uh i don't necessarily suggest this tree to everyone else because it's going to involve a lot of trading every single map you do has to have a minimum of one delirium orb on it for this to even be worth it otherwise why are we taking all of these nodes why are we even up here doing this plenty of other strategies you can do i included this one purely because it's the one I'm going to be doing. And if I don't show you the one I'm going to be doing, that feels disingenuous. Now, that is all the ones that I suggest. However, we did come up with a grand design tree. Now, this is highly experimental. So you are welcome to count the nodes, but grand design, small atlas passives grant nothing. Your maps have 1% increased pack size per allocated notable. So the notables still work, all the travel nodes do not. So we've taken 40 notables in this tree, including what we have blocked, as well as fortune favors the brave, giving us another 10 pack size. With fortune favors the brave, this tree gives us 50% pack size, which is an insane amount of pack size. Absolutely mental. Just too much pack size. But then we thought, that's just raw pack size. So how are we going to make this profitable? And so, again, this is all theory. Uh, we have taken the expedition and breach nodes that matter. Those are two things that scale incredibly well with pack size expeditions with an extra 50 percent pack size is almost like saying 50 percent more logbooks like it that should be insane in theory uh breaches same thing i might as well be that might as well be 50 percent more splinters so we're hoping that this tree works really well by juicing our breaches and juicing our expedition as much as possible and then what we're going to do is we would just put breach and expedition scarabs 
in the maps that we run here and then we would pick a map that also probably had a div card because we're looking at like 50 percent pack size so that's pro pretty good and uh yeah hopefully hopefully getting a whole lot of rewards out of Bre both breach and the expedition now i don't know who's ballsy enough to try this first um it's certainly very interesting i don't know whether 50 percent pack size is worth giving up every small notable that we took on the entire tree because they all no longer do every anything at all so it's really hard to do the math on that and work out whether it's worth it or not but it is a very interesting tree it's the only one that's significantly different from anything that we would ever have done lastly so i'm really hoping it works um we did spend a lot of time like min maxing the individual points of this tree so i'm hoping it's good but until someone tries it i don't think we're gonna know all right that is the end of my atlas trees that is all the atlas trees that i have for now if you've got any really good atlas trees that you think are great feel free to leave them in the comments i will look at all of them if you leave them in the comments please for the love of god use tiny url to make them smaller do not post those massive links in the comments i swear i will delete it if they're too long <laughs> all right that is all. I will see everybody next time. Bye.